This free presentation is brought to you by Quantum University. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Faith Nelson, and I have been a health practitioner for the past 35 years. My emphasis has been in integrative medicine. And as a nurse, I've been able to and have had the opportunity to work with integrative approaches utilizing auricular therapy, biofeedback, massage therapy, kinesiology, reflexology, and essential oils. And the combination of all of these different approaches I have found has worked very, very well with pain, stress, anxiety, addictions, and muscle tension. And so today the emphasis is going to be on the importance of how energy medicine truly is the future of managing and creating optimum health and vitality naturally. So let's uh, go ahead and move on. We first of all have to understand the principles of what integrative health actually is. And by understanding energy and how we are an integral part of a whole towards the healing with our patient and client, we realize that this is a partnership of not only them taking responsibility for their health, but for us being the facilitator and educating them and providing some natural approaches for their stress and pain. So I have been part of the Western allopathic uh, medical view uh, for many years. Matter of fact, the first part of my nursing career uh, was spent in the intensive care units and working in those type of settings and seeing how the medical view of seeing the body as a machine, you know, that was controlled by the brain along with the nervous system, it left out the energy factor of the vital force. And fortunately, I had the opportunity since I was working in the intensive care to have some hands-on approaches with my patients. And because I had interest in the hands-on approaches very early on in my career, I would be able to implement some simple massage techniques and reflexology techniques and activating neurolymphatic points on the body to help with conditions such as nausea or relieving pain you know, within a matter of seconds. And, and it uh, was a great learning ground for me, you know, to see that there was more than just the limited Western version. But the allopathic view, what I saw, it primarily would treat the crisis, you know, utilizing surgery and pharmaceuticals to target the diseased illness. Now, of course, in crisis situations, you know, that is a wonderful thing to have in need, but in the majority of the patients in these uh, end of life settings, what was also evident was that their lifestyles played a key component as far as uh, causing them to be in that situation. So it doesn't discount, you know, for the energy of the body as the optimum approach to healing. And so working together, you know, with the hands-on approaches and the energetic approaches along with the allopathic approaches is to me the great uh, combination of working with these individuals. So modern medicine, it currently utilizes many diagnostic methods and that recognize the physical body as an energetic body. So, for example, you know, we have the cardiac monitors to monitor the EKG. We have the EEG monitors to monitor the brainwave functions. We have, you know, monitors to monitor the muscle and the nerve pathways of the body. And so there's, you know, several different diagnostic methods that are already out there. And the advances in technology, like with the PET scan, the CAT scan, the thermography, you know, the imagery, all of these are tools that give us a diagnostic recognition of what's going on in the physical body. But in our bodies, the cell in our body, it vibrates at a certain frequency. And the cells network together to keep everything in harmony. And disease, what it does is it produces erratic vibrations that lead to disharmony, 
followed by a lack of energy and disease. And so this is where energy medicine and frequency work comes in. So in our body, there are many, many ways that the body reacts and there's many reactions in the electrical stimuli that occur. The cells in our bodies, they have membranes with electrical impulses. And the body energy is measured. We have amps and volts and static magnetic energy in our energetic field. And these can be measured with reactions of the body to certain electronic stimulus. So like when I'm using the auricular electroacupuncture, I'm using a point probe to scan the auricular microsystem on the ear that will pick up on the different electronic stimuli that is going on on certain key points. And then the morphology in the ear is mapped out so that when the frequency goes low, it's showing that there's little reaction that's going on to that particular function going to that particular organ system or structure in the body. And then you can balance that by sending a frequency back directly into that specific microsystem point to bring things back into balance. So we have learned through the years that we're all very, very completely unique. Our fingerprints are unique and also our cell frequencies are also unique because of our DNA. And even Edgar Casey, you know, way back when, you know, he was working as an intuitive healer, you know, one of his sayings that caught my attention was that all strength, all healing of in, in nature is the changing of the vibrations from within, the attuning of the divine within the living tissue of a body to creative energies. And this alone is healing, whether it's accomplished by the use of drugs the knife or whatnot, it is the attuning of the atomic structure of the living cellular force to its spiritual heritage. So, you know, Edgar Casey, with his legacy in health readings, he would scan the body and he would be able to see where the body was out of balance based on its vibratory frequency. Now, Hans Saley, you know, he had the theory, you know, that when we experience a stressor, initially it can come into the body, you know, into the, as a reaction, as an alarm reaction. And that's the initial symptom. Let's take, for example, when somebody smokes. So maybe for the first time, you know, they cough, you know, maybe it makes them dizzy, maybe it makes them lightheaded. And then they move into an adaptation phase if they continue to smoke and have that stressor continue, you know, to get into the body. The body starts to adapt to that stressor and that's called the adaptation phase. But then over the years, if a person continues to smoke, then we move into the exhaustion phase and the exhaustion phase then can mimic what occurred in the reaction in the reaction or alarm reaction phase. So perhaps at the end stage of exhaustion, then maybe they're gonna re-experience some of those symptoms of coughing. You know, maybe they're short of breath from COPD. You know, maybe they have asthma. You know, maybe they have emphysema. You know, but these are to where the body has tried to adapt over the years, but it actually had an energetic imbalance in the body causing you know, several different key reactions that end up being harmful and exhaustive. So stress, when we look at it, it can be broken down into dis-ease. We're not allowing the frequencies to flow easily throughout the body. So simply put, when the frequencies of our cells are high, we experience good health. And that's what Edgar Casey was talking about. But when the frequencies for our cells are low, we're more susceptible to disease. And that's why when you're tired or exhausted or in that exhaustion phase that Hans Saley points out, you are more susceptible you know, to your colds or to your flus and you know, different disease processes. But dis-ease is found in non-vibrating, non-charged or non-energized cells. 
And the more that our bodies are exposed to toxins, whether it be physically, emotionally, and mentally, the lower the frequency drops in our cells. So even the environment that you live in is so important to your health because everything is bombarding our bodies at multitude of frequencies and rates. And, and so we have to be aware of geopathic stressors. We have to be aware of the energetic frequencies in our home. You know, perhaps there's outlets or in today's technological world, you know, we have computers, we have Xboxes, we have large DVD screens, we have microwaves. You know, so there's a lot of extra electrical frequencies that are bombarding us even in our home. And um, even, you know, sleeping in a room that has a TV, even though it's turned off, or an alarm clock that's plugged into an electrical socket can disrupt the electrical patterns in the brain to where you don't get a deep REM sleep. And so your exposure to these toxins in our world today, you know, comes in many, many various forms. What energy medicine does is it assists the body in increasing that vibration or the frequencies of the cells, and it brings the vibrations of the body back to that natural state of health. And so, you know, we have frequencies that have taken our body out of balance, and then we have frequencies through electromedicine or energetic modalities or hands-on healing that can then normalize and bring the body back to balance. Now, the electromagnetic field that's given off by energetic healers and by modalities, they interact directly with our cells to raise the frequencies. And this has been shown in many different uh, you know, ways. I mean, even with uh, the PET scans, you know, have shown that with the auricular stimulation in the ear, it releases endorphins in certain parts of the brain. There's also cranial electrical stimulation that you can just wear simple electrodes on the earlobes, and those will send electrical frequencies into the brain to help with decreasing uh, cortisol, increasing dopamine, increasing serotonin and tryptophan and DHEA. And so there's ways that we can electrically stimulate the body, you know, instead of using pharmaceuticals, which these days, you know, there's so many side effects with the pharmaceutical and um, also invasive procedures. I just recently had a Parkinson's patient and um, he had gone through the deep brain a stimulator procedure, you know, to where he has a stimulator inserted, you know, into the thalamus part of his brain to help with the tremors, you know, whereas energetically, there could be some non-invasive modalities or cranial electrical stimulation that could have the same effect. The electrical magnetic um, frequencies in our bodies, those can come back into balance very naturally, like I said, either through modalities or inter, you know, energetic healers. We can also teach our clients what they can do for themselves energetically to bring things back into balance. So energetic medicine, it helps determine the stress in our body and the stressors, they're gonna reveal why there are blockages it's going to reveal the level of degeneration, oxygenation, hydration, toxicity. It's also going to indicate why you feel tired and fatigued, you know, which phase, you know, in the Han Saley scale that you're in, alarm, adaptation, or exhaustion. Or it can also go into panels, you know, of indicating, you know, why you're in so much pain. Why are you feeling depressed? Why are your neurochemicals off balance? Why are your digestive, you know, enzymes off balance? Why are you having headaches, aches and pains? And the list goes on. And so, you know, with biofeedback, that's one of uh, my, another modality that I use. I use an energetic quantum device that will be able, that scans the body energetically and picks up on these frequencies that are having low resonance. And I'll be demonstrating that later. So why do our systems get out of resonance? 
as I mentioned before, it's because we live in a very, very fast moving electrical world, you know, with all of these other things, the microwaves, the cell phones, the TV, TVs, computer monitors, you know, electrosmog is how they're referring to it. And, and living in this type of world, it throws off our high vibration and then it has an effect on our complex internal electrical system. So it kind of uh, blows our circuit breakers, you know, by having too much stimulus, you know, come into our electrical body. So years of suffering from chronic health conditions, we've come to know that we're not always able to help our clients, you know, with just conversation. Um, we also know that there's certain disease patterns that attach to the human energy field. The body electric or EPR, which stands for the electrophysiological reactivity of the body. And we have homeopathic medicine, or I'm sorry, allopathic medicine, as I mentioned earlier, you know, where I saw that we're mainly treating the physical symptoms of the body and what's aligned, out of alignment there. We have psychotherapy, which deals with the mind and the emotions. And then we have spiritual healers that deal with more subtle realms. I was very fortunate when I was working on my PhD and because of my interest in the integrative field, I uh, was able to assist in the development of an integrative clinic about 20 years ago. And it was within a mainstream medical model. So I worked with anesthesiologists that had severe chronic pain patients and they had exhausted all the means that they had with surgery or with anesthesia you know, with uh, different pain injections and pharmaceutical approaches. And so uh, we started seeing these chronic pain patients that were the worst of the worst in utilizing a combination of energy medicine, massage therapy, physical therapy, psychotherapy, because, you know, working with the mind and emotions was also very critical. And then also hands-on healing with Reiki and with chakra balancing and things like that, we found that we had significant profound effects on their health and on their pain management. And all the areas of their pain, their stress, their sleep, their muscle tension, headaches, all had gone down significantly without any pharmaceutical or invasive procedures. It was also very cost effective compared to some of those invasive and pharmaceutical approaches. And um, I think, you know, the other key thing was being able to educate these clients on some simple things that was causing the pain to occur. And so I think that uh, more of that needs to happen and also to be integrated into the allopathic settings. So energy medicine involves changing the frequencies of the electromagnetic waves of the auric field. And when you're doing hands-on healing, you know, they have been able to take pictures of, you know, healers and their chakras and the magnetic fields that's coming off of the hands and bringing, you know, the erratic frequencies of the body back into the balance. And, um, you know, it, it can have a profound effect. I had an opportunity to work in the neonatal intensive care with little, little itsy bitsy babies. And um, one of the key things when you're working with premature babies is to keep them quiet because every ounce of energy that they expend utilizes caloric, you know, um, intake and their, you know, their weight is like two to three pounds. And so one thing that I was able to teach the nurses was how to do a chakra balancing on the infant, you know, while he was or she was lying on their back or on their stomach. And by doing this energetic balancing up the chakras with these infants, it would calm them down and create a very comforting effect. And the nurses uh, were amazed with uh, how quickly the infants responded. And so we then implemented uh, they called it uh, rocking therapy. And we had grandmas and grandpas that would volunteer and teaching them just a simple balancing hold 
you know, of holding the baby on the bottom and holding them at the top and visualizing the chakras being balanced as they would rock the baby would relax the nervous system. And so, you know, these were very critical things. And to this day, they still implement that in the neonatal intensive cares. So I'm grateful for that. Okay. So um, we now are finding that there's many, many different scientific news that are discovering that electrical stimulation of the brain and the body can have profound effects for reducing migraines. And I have been using electromedicine for migraines very effectively for, you know, the past 20 years since uh, I had started that uh, chronic pain clinic. We then specialized into headache clinic, uh, fibromyalgia clinic, and a weight loss clinic and an addiction clinic. But some of the things that I found utilizing electrostimulation was very, very effective in bringing a migraine from a level 10 migraine down to a zero within a matter of minutes by stimulating some key acupuncture points on the ear, such as the thalamus, the cingulate gyrus, and a neck point on the ear, as well as a psychosomatic point on the top of the ear. We also uh, would utilize the cranioelectrical stimulation to take down the inflammation that was happening and also some of the neurochemical imbalances that were going on in the brain. Another key thing that we found besides the electromedicine was doing some hands-on um, neurolymphatic stimulation that I'm going to be demonstrating to help open up those electrical pathways. So whether you're using, you know, direct electrical stimulation, you know, to go through the electrical pathways of the body or hands-on approaches, you know, at least now the FDA, you know, they're approving, you know, these stimulators. And there's one actually that uh, you can, you know, buy over the counter. And it's a device that, you know, attaches to the, you know, it's just like a headband and it stimulates the forehead. I mean, to me, it's, it's you know, a very simple approach, but, you know, there's uh, been these electrical approaches for 20 years, but it just seems like it takes the FDA, you know, many more years to get these devices approved. We also have been using EDR biofeedback, electrodermal response biofeedback. And what it is doing is it's checking the reactivity, you know, of the electrodermal system through the biofeedback. And it accurately measures over 10,000 different substances and electromagnetic waveforms. And it also shows the reactivity of stressors as related to perverse energies, toxicity, and to various imbalances in the amino acids, bacteria, molds, fungi, viruses, allergens, minerals, enzymes, hormone levels, muscle stressors, and emotions. So these energetic um, electrodermal biofeedback devices are quantum biofeedbacks that are becoming very, very sophisticated. And, and you know, I have been using, you know, these type of devices probably for, you know, the last 15 years. And I have found that it has been a key modality for validating what is out of balance and then going into those areas of the body or the mind or the spirit that are out of balance and bringing them back into balance with some hands-on integrative approaches. So by utilizing some external electromagnetic stimuli with energy medicine, we can also stimulate the acupuncture points and meridians of the body. And, you know, this is ancient history. The Chinese have been practicing acupuncture, you know, for over 5,000 years. Allopathic medicine has actually only been around for 200 some years. And so, you know, taking the wisdom and the knowledge, you know, from the history of these ancient healers, you know, we can learn a lot from. But by stimulating these acupuncture points and these meridians and chakras, we can reactivate, eat, reactivate any of these areas of flow that have been obstructed. And when you don't have electrical flow to your 12 major organ systems of the body, then guess what? Then eventually you're going to start having that dis-ease 
process go on and the organs are going to start going into some exhaustive phases. And so then that's when you can end up with some end of life crisis, you know, with heart failure, with kidney failure, with lung problems, with digestive problems, with liver conditions, and, you know, the list goes on. Um, so the key is to bring these electrical circuitry back into homeostasis. And by opening up these channels, you're going to keep the electrical frequencies flowing in a balanced way to these bodies. So it truly is time for an integrative approach for health and healing and understanding how the balance of the body electric is so important. So in Touch for Health, there are, you know, 12 major organ systems that correspond to several different neurolymphatic systems of the body. And by doing some simple activation with some hands-on and teaching your clients how to activate these major organ systems every day will keep that electric circuitry open. And so, you know, working with your client in that educational process and showing them by activating some of these different neurolymphatic points not only opens up the electrical flow, but it also has an impact in sending the electrical frequencies to the muscle groups that correspond with those organ systems. For example, one of the questions that we would ask with our migraine patients was, when does your headache start? And one of the most common responses was first thing in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. Why is that? Because according to Chinese medicine and the time clock theory, the stomach meridian, which starts behind the eyeballs, opens up at seven o'clock in the morning between seven and nine. Well, if that electric circuitry gets stuck, then you have a buildup of that electrical pressure. And so if the pain with the headache starts behind the eyes or right in the forehead, then one simple thing that we would teach our clients first of all, is to be hydrated because you need hydration in order to get the electrical system working. And then a simple massaging underneath the left and right pec muscles, which, you know, right here in this little seesaw effect, what that does and underneath your pec muscles right here on the left side is your stomach meridian and on the right side is your liver and your gallbladder. Well, they correspond with the muscle groups in the back of the neck and with the rhomboid muscles where a lot of migraine patients experience a lot of tension. And just by stimulating underneath those pec muscles, then that opens up the electrical activity that starts behind the eyes and it goes all the way down the body to the second toe. It's a very long meridian. And once that is opened up, then the you don't have that buildup. And it's just a matter of minutes before the headache is gone. I had one nurse, she lived with migraines for 25 years. And every morning she would wake up at seven in the morning and she would have this debilitating migraine, but she would work through it. And by educating her on these simple techniques and the importance of hydration, she no longer had another migraine. So, like I said, I think it's, uh, you know, some of these things are very, very simple, you know, but uh, sometimes that's all we need is that simplicity and understanding. There are several different microsystems of the body. And when you understand reflexology and understand how these microsystems correlate to the macro system, the whole body, then you can stimulate or educate your clients on how they can activate key points on their scalp, on their ears, on their hands, on their feet, okay, and to open up or to alleviate pain. Take, for example, the hoku point, you know, which is, you know, between the webbing of the thumb and the forefinger. This is an important acupressure point for headaches and for relieving pain. And then also on the bottoms of the feet, you know, teaching your clients how the feet are mapped out to the macro system of the body so that when they're having their feet massaged, 
you know, or having reflexology, they can have an understanding and correlation of why is that particular point so tender, you know? Why, you know, does it hurt on the adrenals? And is there a correlation of adrenal exhaustion with that area of the foot being tender? And the answer is yes. Uh, stimulating the, you know, the bottom heel of the foot, you know, for digestion, for constipation. And, um, you know, working on the tips of the fingers, you know, for sinus problems. So understanding these different microsystems and keeping it simple for the lay person so that they can have a quick reference of some self-help tools that they can use. I also like to incorporate essential oils. And again, for the lay person, I like to keep it very simple with five basic oils that I use for stimulating these microsystems of the body. And they're simple oils that they can also, you know, easily get over the counter or from some distributor. And that's uh, peppermint, which is very good. It's a stimulating oil, but it's a very good oil to massage on the scalp and uh, use for stimulating, you know, for headaches. Um, orange is a very good digestive oil that can be used um, on the inside points of the ears for digestion or rubbing in a clockwise manner, you know, for um, digestive disorders or for like flu-like symptoms. Um, lemon is also a very uplifting oil. Um, we also have uh, your tea tree oil and eucalyptus, which are excellent for massaging on your neurolymphatic points on the chest and also on some acupuncture lung one point and flushing down the arm. And so again, educating your client on some simple self-help things that they can do. One other thing that I like to educate them on is the importance of magnesium because the body not only needs hydration, but it needs magnesium to be balanced in there too for the electrical conductivity of this system. And so Epsom salt soaks, you know, with some of these different oils is also very beneficial for keeping that electrical system vibrating high. Then we have the auricular system of the um, microsystem and auricular acupuncture or auricular electroacupuncture has been around again, you know, for many, many years. And um, actually it was again, something used by the Chinese, one of the lumbago points, which is right here, they would find that it would be cauterized, you know, back in the day. And that's how they would alleviate uh, lumbago. You know, when people had low back pain, they didn't, couldn't do surgery back then, but you know, they would cauterize that point with a, a hot probe. Um, and then note all of the areas of the brain and the jaw and the teeth. So, you know, TMJ, you know, different visual brain problems. So educating your client or give them a map of the ear because the ear is so easy, you know, to teach them how to activate and, and how to just massage or to apply some essential oils. Because when these microsystem points are stimulated, what we're doing is we're sending a current directly to the body to bring balance back where there has been resistance, which has been causing the stress and over a long period of time, of course, causes disease. One other thing is spiritual healing or energetic healing with chakra balancing. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Brazil and to observe some spiritual healers in, over there. And this was, um, you know, one modality that they use that was very, very balancing for the spiritual bodies. And what it was is it was um, crystals, quartz crystals, that were put inside these seven different lights that then would correspond with the different chakra systems and would be directed with light therapy to balance the energetic and spiritual bodies with light in balancing the chakras. So here we show uh, besides the basic chakras, some other energetic chakras and some microsystem chakras outside of the body. So we can see how important it is for these vortexes of energy, you know, to keep vibrating. And they can get off balance by that electrical smog that we spoke about earlier. But each of the seven major chakras are located 
also at major nerve plexus along the brain and spinal cord within the central nervous system. And then there's also an endocrine gland that's associated with each chakra as well. And when these chakras, they function to energize or to vitalize and keep in balance the physical body. So here's a picture of where I'm energetically balancing the chakras of the body with the quantum biofeedback device where it's picking up those frequencies and it's realigning those energetic bodies and chakras, you know, until we get that vibrant frequency in alignment again. So what we need to do is integrate both the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and bring everything with the intention of restoring balance and wholeness and unity to the physical and metaphysical realms of our being. And when we do this, the body and the spirit and the mind are working synergistically to be at their optimum level of, of functioning. So the key benefit of integrative health care is that it not only engages the client as a partner in the healing process, but it also engages us in consciousness to interface with that client to assist them in the healing process. So I like this Chinese proverb. It says the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago and the second best time is now. So even though many of these different modalities and techniques and healing approaches have been around for thousands of years, you know, we can now come full circle and integrate those into our practice and integrate them into our client's life so that they can help to heal themselves and those they love. So... You know, what it's all about is taking care of ourselves and also having the faith in our ability to heal. So I appreciate your time in understanding some of these basics of integrative medicine and energy medicine approaches. And what we're doing is we're learning to improve the quality of living for our clients and for ourselves. Because as we work with our clients, we're also working with ourselves and we're teaching ourselves. And the process includes understanding our awareness and shifting our paradigm so that we can begin to practice and teach the self-care and self-healing and self-responsibility. I wanna emphasize self-responsibility because you know, one thing that uh, in our clinic, we had quite a few patients that were on disability or Medicare but what we found, if they did not take an active participation in the program, then they had, you know, very little improvement. And what we come to surmise is they did not have that self-responsibility or perhaps they didn't want to get better. Maybe they became, you know, dependent on the financial, you know, rewards of not having to work, you know. But um, so making sure that your client also is taking, you know, a participatory, you know, um, practice, you know, in this work that you're doing. So these natural integrative approaches for the stress, anxiety, pain, headaches, endocrine imbalances, addictions, sports enhancement, brain tuning, and repair can all be done naturally. So now what I'd like to do is we're going to just take a little break and I'm going to set up a quick demonstration where I'm going to demonstrate uh, migraines and I'm going to be implementing biofeedback, um, hydrotherapy, kinesiology, scalp massage, essential oils, guided imagery, CES stimulation, chakra balancing, and client education. So thank you for your attention. And now you can see how we put all of this together. Okay, welcome back. I have a young man here, Michael. And uh, Michael, um, he has been experiencing migraine headaches since you were how old? Um, about three. Three. And um, 
The thing is, is that it's a familial or epigenetic type thing because his father, his grandfather, had both had severe migraines. And uh, his dad to this day still has migraines, but I've been working with Michael. And uh, we have found out some key things besides utilizing biofeedback. Uh, we also have discussed uh, hydration, haven't we, Michael? Mm -hmm. And um, how much water are you drinking? About three glasses a day. Okay, and then you're in sports now, so when you're in sports, you rehydrate after your sports as well, right? Yes. And no more sodas, right? Mm-hmm. So what have you found out about sodas? Is that it's unhealthy and has lots of chemicals that gives you, that makes you dehydrated. Right. And so you've uh, eliminated, you know, some of those toxins from your body, haven't you? Mm-hmm. And, um... What were some of the other things that you learned from me that help with your headache? Um, it, well, I think um, peppermint oil helps a lot. Peppermint oil? You just need lots of water. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you also used ice at the back of your neck? Yes, I did. Okay. And then, Michael, um, what time of the day do your headaches usually start? In the morning, usually. So, Michael has what we call is a typical stomach meridian headache. And when he, if you wake up in the morning with that 7 o'clock headache, like I had discussed earlier, what's the first thing that you do in the morning? Drink water. You drink water. And then there's uh, some points on your body. Remember that stomach meridian, it starts back mm -hmm. here, right? And that's usually where you're tender. Mm -hmm. And so... You don't want to put peppermint near your eyes, do you? No. Because it burns, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, underneath those your pec muscles, you do your little seesaw. Show them how you do a seesaw. Okay? And what that is doing, it's opening up that electrical activity going all the way down, and it goes down to your second toe, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And... I also have had Michael using cranial electrical stimulation for balancing some of the neurochemistry in the brain, uh, serotonin to help him sleep deeper at night. You're sleeping good now too, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, endorphins for pain and um, tryptophan, DHEA, and takes down cortisol, which is an inflammatory response. So let's go ahead and take those off. And um, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you what we would do in a typical session. I have my biofeedback running at this point, and you can see that I'm focused on the brain. So I'm going to be doing this focus session on balancing the brain wave activity. So, Michael, this is like an ear, okay? And it's mapped out like an upside down baby. Okay, so the brain of the baby would be down here by the earlobe. So when you're having headaches, you learn how to rub it like this. Okay, and then there's two other points for pain. One is underneath this little flap, and you put your nail there and just kind of poke like that. Okay, and then right here is where the neck muscles right here start. And so you're just going to press down like that. Okay. And because usually your neck gets real tight with your morning headaches, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why you're using ice on your neck, right? Yes. Okay. Now, you had said that peppermint works really well, right? Yes. Okay. So it's important to dilute our oils with a carrier oil instead of doing it directly. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to let you play with this here. And I've diluted some oil in this little little thing here. And see this little wand? I'm going to give it to you. And all you're going to do, turn your head sideways, We're going to, you're going to just rub it on your earlobe and on those two points I told you about. Okay? And then you're going to rub those earlobes and the inside there in that point. Okay? And so when you have a headache, you can do that. All right? So that's one thing is educating your client, however old they are. How old are you? I'm 10. You're 10. And uh, teaching them some self-help things that they can do. Now, 
What I'm doing with Michael right now is I'm interfacing with him in consciousness with the quantum biofeedback device. And so I'm checking with him to see how his brain is actually balancing right now. And as it's doing that, I'm using some visual tools with him. This is what the frontal part of your brain looks like. Okay. And we can look at some other areas of the brain. There's the side, the parietal, okay, and the temporal. That's be this section right here, okay. And then um, you also have some, once in a while you get pain in that very back section. So you can see the brain has different, you know, sections. But where your headaches are right here in the frontal, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm sending some extra frequency to there, okay. Now, you get uh, dizzy when you have those headaches, too, right? Yes. Okay. So another thing that we could do is we can go into here and, you know, you have, you know, many times pain with the headaches. Um, or we can go here and we can balance the right-left side of the brain. Okay. And the more you can relax, then the easier the brain can relax too because it's real tense when you're having a headache, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so let's go back in here and um, let's see if uh, what this is showing me is actually your brain is looking very good today. And I know that you've been playing a lot of sports today. What all did you play today? I played football. Um, Pickleball. Football and pickleball. Now, did you rehydrate yourself? Yes. Okay. So, um, again, reemphasize, you know, what it is that they're doing. And as you're, you know, working, you know, with some quantum energy devices with them. Another thing that I would do if he was actually in pain, uh, but you're not having a headache right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is I would use, you know, perhaps this Pointer Plus, you know, this is one of my portable auricular devices, and Michael, I would have you hold this in the palm of your hand, and let's just, let me just put this up, turn sideways, and when you turn this on, what it's going to do is it's going to detect, you know, where the frequencies are that are out of balance and so I can actually just do a scan and it's showing some high frequency there and then I would send in a stimulus to balance that out okay so auricular acupuncture can work very very quickly um, another thing that I do that uh, that I know that you enjoy is a uh, scalp massage mm -hmm. right and so just uh, taking the scalp and you can do this yourself, you know, with oils, okay, is rubbing the front and back part of the scalp and along all those different suture lines. And so if we look at the scalp, Michael, then we can see that, uh, let me just show you here, in the cranium, see all these suture lines? Mm -hmm. Those are all areas that can get tense too, even your jaw. Okay, so that's why you want to rub all those areas, okay, and um, and then also, you know, rubbing on your chest, you know, will help with your circulation and your lungs and your heart, okay, but uh, always remember to rub underneath these two points to open up that electrical pathway because I want to show you in acupuncture, if you look at what we call that stomach meridian, Look where it starts. It starts right there behind the eye. Then it goes down the mouth all the way down. And it goes down the leg and down to the second toe. That's a long electrical flow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, anytime it gets stuck, especially if it gets stuck way up high, you've got to get that electrical pathway opened up, right? Yes. Now another thing is on your hand, if you're ever having any headache, see between your thumb and your forefinger, see this acupuncture point right here? Yes. You can just hold that point, that's called hoku. Hoku. Can you say that? 
Oh, cool. And you just rub it. Now, if I did that on you, it feels kind of like a rope, doesn't it? Yes. And it's tender. And that creates a pain response that interferes with your headache response. Okay? And that helps with the pain. Okay? Now, why don't you lay back on the chair here, and um, I want to show you. Um, go ahead and lay, lay all the way back. With your feet, you know, the feet, too, are a microsystem. And I know you like to have your feet rubbed, don't you? Mm -hmm. What what happens when you get your feet rubbed? Um, my head is feels a lot more relaxed. Yes. So the way the feet are mapped out is the brain is your big toe. Okay? Just like your earlobe in this microsystem is your brain. This is where your brain is. And so, you know, you can poke it like this or... I've got another tool that I use, this little piezo. Do you mind if I just use this? I've used mm -hmm. this before on you. And I would stimulate that point with this, you know, to open up some different reflex points, right? Mm -hmm. You can also put, you like to have oil put on your feet, right? Mm -hmm. And lotion, magnesium lotion, you've been using that, right? Mm -hmm. And how about uh, baths? Yes, I take a couple baths. Epsom salt baths? Yes. Mm -hmm. So going all the way down the side of your feet, starting up here by the big toe, here's where the neck is, right here. And that's what gets tense on you with your stomach headache. And then just rub it all the way down the side, down to your heel. Okay? So, and then right here in the middle of your foot is called K1, kidney 1. Okay? Mm -hmm. But underneath that is your adrenal point, and I know sometimes you get tired from all the sports you do. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, rubbing on that point also helps your feet. Okay, so let's look back at our, um, our little program here. And it looks like, um, you know, I did work on you a little bit, but it looks like the normal pattern of your brain function is uh, looking really good right now. And so... You know, with the quantum biofeedback, I use this as an indicator, but uh, there's also, you know, several other programs. Uh, since Michael is beginning sports, um, he likes for me to run the sports program. And so going into the sports program for visual imagery, you know, we can work on your coordination for football, right? Mm -hmm. And memory and willpower, stability. And what's the key one? Focus it. Focus. Yes, you love to focus. And so, you know, working on, we can do those sort of things with this. We can work on aligning the spine and the electrical part of the body. And then we can also, you know, take a look because emotions can play a big factor too, can't they? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can, you know, balance emotions in here. Okay, maybe we might want to you know, look at an emotion chart and uh, look at, to see if that needs to be balanced. And then we can also, you know, go into any of these other areas, like with maybe nerves are, you know, a problem or something that needs to be balanced. Okay. So there's many, many different things that we can do within our quantum biofeedback, right? Yeah. And um, I'm so glad that you don't have headaches anymore. Because you started having headaches when you were real tiny, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you for quitting drinking soda. And you're doing a really great job drinking uh, water and keeping your body hydrated. So so you've learned a lot over the years, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. You're very good. So, again, um, just so you know, there's many different things that you can do with your clients and to teach them things that they can do for themselves to bring things back into balance. And so, you know, I appreciate you, Michael, and that you were willing to help us out here. And and um, so I hope this kind of gave you an idea of some of the combination of different things that you can use. So I think I'll just go ahead and sign out for now. And, and remember, it's always a continual learning journey. Bye-bye. Join the quantum medicine movement. Speak with an admission advisor today.